hello and welcome to the last day of skincare week. We have done seven days of skincare reviews and we are going to end off with my long-term half face test of the ordinary 100% organic cold pressed rose hip seed oil. If you've not been watching all of my skincare week reviews to date, I have a playlist listed down below or linked down below so you can go back and watch those. That also includes the intro video that shows you the kind of skin that I have, the kind of trouble that I have with my skin so that you can, you know, get all up close and personal with me. Now, because I've already talked about an ordinary product in this series, I'm not going to talk too much about the company, but I will link specifically that video down below so that you can go and watch that if you're interested in the company, about what they do, what their point of view is. But just as a very basic intro here, The Ordinary talks about having clinical formulations with integrity. It means they take really good ingredients, put them into their products, and then don't charge you a lot for them because they don't pay a lot for them. They talk about how other companies will often hype up ingredients to make you pay more for the product, even though those ingredients are very commonly used and not that expensive. So in choosing this to test, I have had people ask me to test this in one of my long-term half face reviews. Uh, so I did that, I got a hold of it, and let me tell you a little bit about the product before I tell you about my experience with it. So this product here is the 100% organic cold press rose hip seed oil. You do get 30 milliliters in here. If you're buying this in Canadian dollars, it is $9.90, so it's costing you less than $10 for pure, why am I showing in the back of the box? <laughs> for pure rosehip seed oil. It is described as being good for all skin types. This product is alcohol-free, silicone-free, nut-free, vegan, and gluten-free, and all of The Ordinary's products are cruelty-free. The description of this product from The Ordinary says this formulation uses 100% pure rosehip seed oil that is both cold-pressed and organic. Rosehip seed oil is rich in linoleic acid, linolenic acid, and provitamin A, all of which degrade when the oil extraction process involves heat. While cold pressed extraction is complex, it preserves all of the quality of this important oil, which has been shown to reduce signs of photo aging and many other skin conditions. Uh, it is provided in the Ordinary's usual packaging, which is both minimal but also kind of luxurious looking at the same time. It's a UV protected bottle so that you don't need to worry about sun getting in here and breaking down any of the ingredients. And it is provided with a dropper for ease of application. They do say that our rosehip seed oil is completely unrefined and imparts a natural scent partly due to its high omega fatty acid content. This scent is not an indication of rancidity. Rosehip seed oil that does not have a scent is refined and offers reduced benefits. I am glad that they mentioned that because this doesn't smell great. Let me just put it out there. It's not a nice spa-like smell in any way. It smells like an oil and like not a pretty oil. There are some oils that smell really nice. This is not really one of them. It doesn't smell bad. It's just not a pretty smell. The directions for this are to apply once a day to the face, ideally at bedtime, after application of water-based treatments. And the one and only ingredient in here is Rosa Canina seed oil. Now, before I get into showing you my application and give you my review of this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the benefits of rosehip seed oil. And I will say that a lot of these benefits are not tested by science. They're not like FDA approved or anything like that. It's often sort of based on the ingredients that we know are in here from the rose hip seed oil and also on the experience that people have had using it. So I got a lot of this information from one article that I'm going to link down below just so that I'm giving credit where credit is due, but uh, there's a lot of variations of this kind of information that is out there. So rose hip seed oil has been prized since ancient times for its valuable healing benefits. Uh, it's loaded with skin nourishing vitamins and essential fatty acids. It contains phenols that have been shown to have antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal properties. It's often used as a carrier oil for essential oils, which are too intense to put on your skin directly. So one of the benefits of rosehip seed oil is that it hydrates. Uh, it's an oil, it does lock in moisture. Rosehip oil contains a wealth of essential fatty acids, including linoleic and linolenic acid, and fatty acids can help 
keep cell walls strong so they don't lose water. The many fatty acids in rosehip oil make it an excellent option for hydrating dry, itchy skin. Uh, the skin also easily absorbs the oil, allowing its antioxidants to travel deep into the skin's layer. I have seen research, or not research, but claims that because the fatty acids and some of the molecules are smaller in rosehip seed oil, that it does have the ability to penetrate further into your skin. In addition to hydrating, it also moisturizes. It helps lock in your skin's natural hydration and any added oils. It claims that it helps exfoliate and brighten the skin. Natural exfoliation rosehip oil can help reduce dullness and leave you with glowing, vibrant skin. That's because it's high in vitamin A and C. Uh, vitamin A is retinol, which encourages skin's turnover, and vitamin C helps aid in cell regeneration, boosting overall radiance. And you'll often see that in that people use retinols and vitamin C as treatments for skin. Vitamin A and vitamin C have also uh, been shown to uh, boost collagen production, so it also has some anti-aging benefits as well. It may help reduce inflammation, so rosehip is rich in both polyphenols and anthocyanin, which may help reduce inflammation. It also contains vitamin E, an antioxidant known for anti-inflammatory effects. Vitamin A, C, and E have been shown to help uh, reduce sun damage from years of having sun on your face. I wouldn't suggest trying to reduce sun damage. I would suggest trying to wear a lot of sunscreen so you don't get sun damage. I don't think anything can truly reverse sun damage that you have, but some of these vitamins may help your skin. Now, one of the big ones that people talk about with rosehip seed oil is that it helps reduce hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation occurs when excess melanin forms dark spots or patches on the skin. It can result from a number of factors like sun exposure, hormonal changes, uh, different drugs that you've been taking, or acne scarring is the other one that people have claimed that this has really helped with. Uh, not only is it said to reduce scars, but also fine lines. However, some of those studies around fine lines have to do with ingesting certain rosehip products. Do not ingest this product. It's not made for that. Uh, but there is some sort of confusion in the studies that are out there about how you are actually using this and if it does have those benefits. Now that we've talked about all the wonderful things that rosehip oil does, let me show you some footage of how I have been applying this and what my skin looks like from six weeks of use on half my face. So I've been using this for the last six weeks on half my face, and it's been this half of my face I've been using it on, which, you know, you can see that the pimples that I have are on the non-oil side of my face. So it has a little dropper in here. I try not to, you know, suck up the whole dropper's worth because we're only using a few drops. I know some people like to use a little less oil. They'll put it on their hands, rub it around them, pat it into their face. I like to get a bit more oil, so I'm just putting a few drops on my cheeks, one on my chin, and then I do the one on my forehead last because it has a tendency to run down towards my eyes. And then I just rub in. I make sure to get it around my nose. Into all the places I want to be hydrated. And you know, you've also now got this nice surface on your skin that if you want to do a little bit of like calming facial, facial self-massage for the end of the night, you can do some of that. Increase the blood flow to your skin. Encourage lymphatic drainage. If you've ever had a massage where they do part of a face massage, you'll know how nice this feels, maybe just a little gentle tapping to, as I said, increase blood flow to the skin, and just a nice little bedtime ritual. There we go. Looking all shiny and ready to go. So although this has not had the magical effect that maybe I was hoping it would, I think I also don't have some of that scarring and um, spots on my skin that this would fade to really see a difference. But I really like it. So let me talk about why. I find this to be a beautiful end of night moisturizer. I found I can either use it over moisturizer to lock in the moisture that the moisturizer puts into my skin, or even just use it on its own as a moisturizer. And it is just so nice and it doesn't irritate my skin in any way. It's like a very neutral moisturizer. Uh, 
but it just feels really nice and I found that I don't have any kind of reaction to it. It doesn't feel too heavy, although because I kind of like putting a fair amount on, it is oily. Like I do feel that oil there, but it almost feels like it gives me a bit of a protection barrier. Uh, I don't mind going to sleep with that little bit of oil on my skin. And I find, especially in the winter, this really helps. Even though I was only doing a half face test of it, I really did find that oftentimes I was like rubbing it around my nose at night because I've been blowing my nose a lot lately and it's been getting specifically dry there. And this really does help. Um, I didn't necessarily see a boost in radiance uh, or anything like that, but I also use a lot of products that do the exfoliation, help my skin turn over. So it's not like I'm starting from zero in that area. What I was really surprised to find out about this or experience from this, they talk about this having uh, antibacterial, antimicrobial properties to it. I don't know if it's from that, if it's from being a really good moisturizer on my skin, but it feels like this side of my face is a lot smoother than this side of my face. And in fact, as you saw in that video, all the acne that I'm having, not all of it, but more acne is happening on the side of my face where I did not use the rosehip seed oil. So it feels like something about the added moisture from it, but maybe also those antibacterial, antimicrobial properties helps fight acne. And in fact, in some of the research that I did, it talked about being a good product for fighting acne. I did not in any way see that I had clogged pores on this side of my face. like. I think we were all scared so much when we were younger about oils, like if you have oily skin or um, acne that oil is somehow bad for you, like that's going to cause it. And that's not what I'm finding. The more I move towards products that add a lot of moisture to my skin, the oils that really do nice things for my skin, the better my skin is looking. And it's not that my skin is super dry, but it just seems to help. I also believe, I'm not a dermatologist, so I just believe this, that moisture is really, I mean, moisture is really good for our skin. You don't need to be a dermatologist to know that. But I think oftentimes people who have acne prone skin or oily skin are actually just using a lot of really harsh products and your skin is overproducing oil to deal with that. I think using gentle cleansers, um, you know, some kind of gentle chemical exfoliating product instead of a physical exfoliating product, and then some of these really nice oils and moisturizers and things that will really cause your skin to be nice and calm. You're just being good to it. And although I didn't see, I mean, I didn't really have any scars to fade, so I wasn't really expecting anything there. But in terms of a nighttime moisturizer, I'm all over this. I'm really looking forward to using this on the other half of my face because I would say maybe about four weeks into the test, I just wanted to start using it everywhere. I just really liked it, but I wanted to stay on track for doing this video that I would only keep it on one and a half of my face. But for me, I think this is really good. I think anybody could benefit from it. You know, even if you don't want to slather it all over your face, it's a good moisturizer, like, you know, for your hands, for your cuticles. Uh, I've also heard it's good for like, you know, your hair, I've not used it in that way but I just really like it. It's, it's, I wanna say it's like a nice neutral moisturizer, but that's not really true because it has benefits in there, but it's just really good. And I'm so glad that you guys wanted me to try it and I'm so glad that it works so well and I'm so glad that it's under $10 and works that well. I mean, I even went on Sephora's website and looked up a few products that contain rosehip seed oil and market themselves as rose oil. And some of them were like $75 and $9.90 Canadian. That means for you Americans out there, this is probably going to be like seven bucks, six or seven bucks. That is awesome. So huge thumbs up from me. Let me know if you've tried this before, if you like it, if there are other inexpensive rosehip seed oils that you like. Leave all of that down in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. If you like this video and you enjoyed skincare week, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, please go back and watch the videos that you didn't watch and uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already. And also let me know what skincare 
products do you want me to try? I would love to do a skincare week going forward, maybe every three months or so, an amount of time so I get like good time to do long-term tests. And then we can do these kinds of seven days of skincare, skincare week. So let me know. Let me know all of that down there in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me this week. This has been so much fun. It took a little bit of planning and organizing, but just an awesome, awesome time. I hope that some of these products that have been good that you will try out, pamper yourself a little bit, be good to your skin. Um, I'm gonna stop talking now. I'm just, it's been such a fun week. And uh, thank you so much, you guys, for watching. And I will see all of you in my next video. Bye.